I'm Denise Farron, the culinary director for Burton's Grill. Today we're going to make oysters Rockefeller and we're going to start by making the Rockefeller topping. We've heated up our pan, we're going to add our salted butter, we want to melt it without browning the butter. We're going to add shallots and garlic to the pan next and we're going to sweat the shallots and the garlic. Sweating it doesn't mean we're taking them around the block for a jug or anything. We're just going to soften them. We don't want to add any color to the shallots and the garlic. Now we're going to deglaze our pan with Sambuca. The Sambuca um, is going to flame up, so just be careful. Stand back from the flame. And we're going to wait until all of the alcohol is cooked off, okay? This is going to give us our Sambuca a nice sweet flavor. A lot of people will use Pernod in their Rockefeller sauce. I like to use Sambuca because I always know I have it in my bar. We are going to add our heavy cream to the pan. And we're going to reduce this by half because this, this is going to make us have that nice creamy texture that a Rockefeller will have. Once I see that my bubbles are getting a lot bigger and they're getting a lot closer together, that's how I know that my sauce is getting reduced. So I'm looking for the sauce to, to kind of stick to my spatula, okay? Or to coat the back of a, of a spoon is also another good way to detect that your sauce is reduced. So when I move my pan, the sauce all moves together. That's when I know I'm good. So now I'm going to add my spinach. And I turn my heat off. I really just want to wilt my spinach down into the sauce. I don't want to turn the spinach brown. That's very important because I want that nice vibrant color when I'm uh, presenting. I'm going to season with salt and pepper. Continuously folding my spinach into the sauce. We're going to add our Pecorino Romano because I like a little bit of the saltiness that the Pecorino Romano gives to the Rockefeller. Once the cheese is melted and incorporated into the sauce, I'm going to turn this sauce out into an ice bath. The reason why I'm using an ice bath is because if I don't, the spinach is going to continue to cook and turn brown. Now we're going to let the Rockefeller topping cool down and we're going to move on to preparing our oysters. I know a lot of people get a little nervous when they have to shuck an oyster, so we're going to talk about how to make it easy. Okay, there's a top and a bottom to an oyster, and you can just see that by the cup of the oyster. So the cup is the bottom, and that's where the oyster holds all of the liqueur. So we want to make sure that we're shucking the oyster with the cup to the bottom. I like to set myself up with a little bit of height on one side, and I always put a towel for protection. So shucking an oyster is really simple. If you understand leverage, you're going to understand how to shuck an oyster. The hinge is really the part that holds the oyster together. So we are going to go in, and we're not pushing with force. We're just going to wedge it in, push a little bit, and pop it up. Okay? That's how you do it. Now I'm holding the oyster with my hand until I get it in there. Because these, these animals are alive right now, and unfortunately, um, not anymore. So now that I have my oyster, I'm going to take the adductor muscle and release it. I then like to flip my oysters over for presentation, especially when I'm serving oysters on the half shell because it, it makes a nice plump oyster presentation. And that's how you shuck an oyster. Now we are going to top our oysters with our Rockefeller sauce. As you can see, the Rockefeller sauce has definitely thickened up over time, and this is what we want. The other beautiful thing about the sauce is that you can make it a day ahead. If you happen to have company coming over, it'll be ready for them to arrive. This sauce is a wonderful um, amount for two dozen oysters. Today we're going to demonstrate six um, oysters, so that's just a half a dozen. So I am only going to use a portion of my sauce. I have about a tablespoon per oyster, and I want to get a little spinach and a little cream on each one. Because when it bakes in a 450 degree oven, it's going to bubble up nice and good. Now that we have all of our oysters topped, we're going to finish them with a little bit of Reggiano cheese. I choose Reggiano for this because I like the nuttiness um, the Reggiano offers. At home, you can definitely use Pecorino so that you don't have to have five different cheeses just for one item. Um, 
We are going to put these in a 450 degree oven for four minutes so that they still have a nice, juicy, plump texture when we pull them out. Now that our oysters have come out of the oven, we're going to present them. You can do this in a couple different manners. Usually oysters on the half shell are presented over crushed ice, so I like to play off of that a little bit. You can use coarse kosher salt. You can use a coarse, coarse grain um, rock salt. Um, I have a little bit of sea salt here right now, and I just dust my plate. This, happen, this also helps with the oysters so they don't roll around either. And then I'm just going to take my oysters, and I like to plate them in a star formation or a circular formation. And while doing this, you can put two dozen on a nice, wonderful, large platter for display for your, um, for your guests. Just move them around a little bit so they all fit. You want to really make sure you keep the liqueur inside the shell because that's really where all the flavor is. And then I just take a cocktail fork and I'll set it right in the center. And there we go. Oysters on the Rockefeller. Thank you.